Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by Allstate Insurance, Jared Mayo of Martin, Tennessee. Thank you, Zach, and welcome everybody to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Zach, what is something you discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? This week, I discovered the T-Rex 3D film that we now have in the Discovery Theater. It's a very unique film. Talks about the history of T-Rex, but also shows the story of three young kids finding fossils of a T-Rex. Yeah, it's a great 3D movie. It's only 20 minutes. We just added a little thing to the side that says 20 <laughs> minutes of 3D fun because people were like coming here and thinking, well, this is a two-hour movie. They mm -hmm. didn't have two hours just to watch a movie, but... The other thing interesting is if you come to Discovery Park in the next few weeks, um, you'll see a gigantic promotional poster for that movie. Did you have you seen that? Downstairs? I have seen it's it. It's huge. <laughs> it is. I wasn't um, sure where we were going to put that. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not sure. We've got it. Uh, it's kind of you know in a way, it's in a place where it's kind of in the way. So <laughs> we're gonna have to figure out what to do with it. But um, it's really cool. Maybe we'll give it away at some point. You know, because we got it from the, you know, movie posters. I mean, it's not a poster. It's like, it's literally, I would say, see, I'm six, seven, I'm nine feet tall. I mean, it's huge. So anyway, um, excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that with us, Zach. Our guests today are Roger Colson and Prentice Colson of Fulton Winery. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So uh, before we uh, start talking about your winery, take me back a little bit. We like to get to know our neighbors. You're, you're over in uh, Fulton. So uh, tell us your story. Either one of you can go first. Well, my story is I was born and raised in, in Callaway County over at Murray. Um, spent my life there. Went to the service. Always tried to get away from Murray. Uh, I, I did several times. I always ended up back there. Uh, traveled the country around as a building inspector, plans examiner for different jurisdictions uh, in different states. Uh, and lo and behold, I ended up back here in a place that I never really thought I would live in, in Fulton. Uh, just never really thought about it as being home. And three years ago, we ended up here and we love it and wanted to stay here. And so all things came together. And the uh, reason we're here now, speaking to you, is because we started the winery. So what do you like about it? It's just calm, relaxing. Uh, it's a lot easier atmosphere compared to the larger cities. Um, there's a lot of things, you know, there are some disadvantages. You don't have as many, uh, I guess, shopping arrangements like you do in big cities, but that's okay. You still get everything you need at a reasonable price. Um, but the biggest thing is I just like coming back to a laid back atmosphere, uh, a little more easy going than, than the, the rat race in the big cities. There's definitely a lot more uh, uh, wilderness and woods and trees and nature. And, you know, I get I get sucked into the yard and just walk around looking at everything. It changes every single day, doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. um, Princess, talk to me about your story. Where where where's your history? Yes, sir. Uh, I was born and raised mostly in Murray, Kentucky, which is about 40, 45 minutes to the east of here. Um, moved around quite a bit, obviously, because he did as well. And um, got my bachelor's at uh, Murray State, ended up getting my uh, master's at Western Governors University and traveled to several places as a business analyst. Finally ended up back in Murray uh, about four years ago and found a house over here in Fulton, lo and behold. Uh, it was a great price at the time, uh, ended up buying that. And that's why I'm here now. And so I... Uh, I love it here. It's like he said, laid back. It's real quiet compared to some of the cities I've been in, uh, you know, like Phoenix and Memphis and things like that. So uh, I just like it here because it's quiet. It's easy going. There's no traffic, you know, uh, so it's nothing like a big city. And one of you was in the military, right? Uh, yes, sir. I was. And uh, uh, tell me a little about that. We love our veterans here at Discovery Park. Uh, I, I enlisted in the service after high school. Uh, this has been a long time ago. I won't date it, but it's been 40 plus years ago. Uh, I enlisted into the Marine Corps. Uh, I spent four years in there. I was a cryptologist, cryptologic communication uh, analyst, uh, interceptor and analyst. Uh, what that was, what that really boiled down to is uh, we were what they called spooks, ghosts, 
uh, we 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 intercepted any kind of non non verbal communications and kept track of all of our world neighbors. Now, have you been to Discovery Park and seen our um, our uh, exhibit here, our military exhibit? Actually, I have not. Uh, I have that on my to do list now. Um, but actually, I have not. I be honest with you. For years after it came in, I really thought it was just for kids. Uh, <laughs> I just, I mean, I know that's, that's a sad thing to, to really understand it, but I don't know if people really fully understand the full extent of what you do have there. Yeah, excellent. Well, uh, come anytime. So t- um, tell me, who, who came up with the idea, let's make a winery? Uh, so this, I guess this dates back many years. My dad made wine when we grew up. Uh, we didn't really drink it. He'd give it away. Uh, of course, I wasn't much of a wine drinker. Uh, over the years, uh, I became more of a drinker. Still wasn't really a wine drinker until the last six, seven years. Got into it. Decided, hey, I want to make some at home. Uh, couldn't find what we wanted on uh, the shelf at, at the liquor store. So we decided, well, hey, let's just make our own. So we did, and we enjoyed the flavors of those. And I got to where I could actually drink the wines. And it's like, hey, these are pretty good. We kept experimenting with various degrees of success. Uh, some of them come out really good. Some of them not so good. Uh, so we learned what not to do as much as we learned what to do. And then one day we just sitting at the table three or four years ago and said, Hey, you know, we ought to start selling this. And lo and behold, here we are. And so, um, uh, Prentice, was there any kind of hesitation to get involved in a, in a business like this? Uh, were you, uh, ready to go from the very beginning? Mostly. I mean, there was some still hesitation for me. Uh, we did some research on as far as, is, is, you know, is it feasible? It wasn't one of those things you just out the door, you're, you're going to make a winery. Um, I definitely wanted to make sure it was, you know, economically feasible. There was returns to be had and everything. So mine was more on the financial side of it, I guess, to, to know if it's a viable business and not something that we're just you know, throwing money into. And all of a sudden, you know, we can't sell it. We can't open. We can't do whatever. Um, but, you know, as soon as those hurdles were addressed and everything, I was on board ready to go for sure. So what what goes into uh going from just an amateur playing around with it, seeing, you know, from that point to actually seeing your products on the shelves. Talk to me a little bit about that and and the process that one goes through. Sure. Well, obviously there's a, a big difference between making it just at home for yourself, friends, family, and doing it commercially. Uh, biggest thing is that is you have to have your federal license. You have to have your state license. Uh, if you're located in a city, you got to have, you know, city business permits, city alcohol permits and things like that. So it's all it's all regulated at all the different levels as far as uh, the, the governments for making it commercially. So if you're making it just for yourself at home, you know, you don't have to have anything, but you also can't sell that product. You can't go out there, you know, bottle it, sell it to your friends, sell it to your neighbor, because uh, then you're not you're, you're trying to sell something that's illegal, per se. Um, so there's a lot of hurdles to jump through for the government entities. But once you have that, it's pretty much the same thing as ho- at home, if you will. You know, you have your recipe, you have your juices, you have your sugars, you have your yeast or whatever else you're going to put in this. So it's it's kind of the same process, just more involved with uh, all the government entities. Are there other family members uh, that are involved in, in this or is it just the father son? Uh, my mother is involved as well. OK, what was her role in the uh, uh, Moral support. Moral support, mostly. <laughs> Prayers. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you plant, you know, first of all, what kind of fruit? Uh, you know, this is an area, this is, we're not in Italy, obviously. And so, you know, I know there's several wineries around here that have been going for a while, like White Squirrel. Um, what, um, what, what, what? Fruits? Are you? Did you plant? Did you already have some on the property you bought, or uh, how do you how do you go about learning that? That's a that's a lot to learn in a short period of time. Sure, and that's a great question. And pretty much everybody that comes to the winery has that exact same question. You know, they're curious about how do we get these from, I guess, a plant to the bottle or to our taps or whatever. And they quit, the short answer is no. We do not grow our own fruits, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, from one. A lot of the fruits or juices we have just are not viable around here. You know, 
Uh, there's, there's no way to plant them here and have a good crop of those and make a batch of wine realistically uh, without having, you know, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres, which at the time wasn't feasible for us uh, as a small startup. So what we do is we source commercially available concentrate. And another reason for that is that it's always consistent. So if you come in and you say, hey, I like your blackberry today and you come back six months from now, you're still going to like the blackberry. You come back a year from now, you're still going to like that blackberry because the flavor palette on that is going to be the same. It's not going to be a volatile changing thing with every single batch we get. Um, you know, they do the science behind the scenes to get it to what we have today. So, you know, that we thought that was probably the best foot forward to get into the industry. We're not saying we won't grow some fruits later and make some of our own, but as of now, we do not. And so do you do any kind of tours or anything that people can come in and see your operation or do you not have it tackled that part yet? We've not got to that part yet. Uh, we, we have that in our business plan. To, uh, one of these days, hopefully set up uh Primarily after an expansion, we would like to set it up so that we can offer tours, uh, have uh, included in that tour some kind of tastings, but, you know, so people can come in, see how, how it's done, how it's made, and learn more about the process. Um, there's a lot of things that it's hard to describe behind the scenes, but if you can see it and people understand, they understand that there's a lot of labor involved. You wouldn't think it would be, uh, but there is a lot of upfront labor uh, and then labor at the end. You do have a couple months there that you don't really have labor, but it, it but it is fairly labor intensive at, at, at times. And we'd like we'd like to educate people on wine and wine making. Uh, so we we really fully hope we can in, implement that here shortly. Now I'm curious about the the design part of this, like your label, because you know we have a winery here at Discovery Park. We have great vines here at Discovery Park, and we depend on our friends at. Um, both White Squirrel and Crown Winery to help us bottle it. Um, and so designing the label was, you know, a long, arduous process with a lot of discussion. What about you guys? How, what was the process that went into designing your label? Well, <laughs> we started out with one thing and we actually ended up with something totally different. Hey, um, that's that's the way it always goes. It, it was. Uh, when we got into it, you know, we, we found something we wanted. We designed it. And well, we couldn't really get it printed like we wanted at the time. We couldn't find a printer that would do it, especially one that would be reasonable. Um, you know, we, we found some people that probably could print it, but it was going to be outrageous for price. So we went back to the drawing board on that and tried to keep as much, you know, as the original one we had with, without spending just, you know, a ton amount of money on that. So we redesigned it. We took off a lot of the things and we made it, I guess, more simplistic, if you will. It's now a lot more cleaner than it was going to be. It's uh, you know straightforward label. We want just just a plain white background with mostly black letters and everything on it. So it's real clean looking. It's crisp. It's a nice looking label, but it's definitely not as uh, I guess intricate as it was to begin with. Uh, but we, we we think it turned out really well. In the future, we might redesign that. But for now, we think it's a, a great label to start with as an entry level. And these are how many uh, different uh, types of wine do you have? I mean, there's a picture here with a lot of. Uh of wines on here how many is that currently we have 13 flavors <clears throat> excuse me that's uh, a lot wines, all of our wines are considered sweet wines with maybe the exception of one that might be a lot of people consider it a semi-sweet uh which would be the mango um it, it's still i consider it sweet but most people come in and say they consider it more of a semi-sweet uh, we opted for the sweet wine simply because in this region, it's really tough to sell dry wines. There are people that like them, and we'd like to introduce those as time goes along. But we felt that the majority of our customers would want a sweet wine to start with, and we were just trying to get off without having to do 40 to 50 versions of wines to appease everybody. We thought we'd catch the brunt of them and then start introducing these others as we go. Uh, obviously, there are other wineries that offer uh, different variations of sweetness. Uh, the Purple Toad uh, in uh, Paducah, Lone Oak, uh, they offer 40-something varieties. Obviously, we couldn't compete with the, the number of types and varieties that they have, uh, but we just drew the line at 13 sweet wines, and then we'll introduce them as we need to going forward. Being in Fulton, um, 
I don't even know if this is possible, but do you guys have a banana flavored wine? That is in currently in the process of being developed. Cool. It's funny that you said that because I was <laughs> I was looking to see if any of them in this picture were banana. Yeah, um, we were actually hoping to have one available this year prior to the banana festival. Uh, but sometimes things don't work quite like you wanted. Uh, mm-hmm. Finding a supplier for what we needed for that was, uh, for some reason, was was a hard task. Uh, we have located that. So now then we're hoping to implement it and have it fully uh, online before next year's banana fest. And we, you know, if we bottle that, we would also like to put uh, just for the banana festival is to have uh, maybe uh, a limited run of so many special edition labels. Uh, so if people wanted to collect them, they could. We're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, I'm going to, I got a few more questions I'm, I'm curious about. So we'll be right back. As an all-state agency in Martin, their knowledge and understanding of the people in this community and surrounding areas help us provide customers with an outstanding level of service. They help families like yours protect the things that are important, your family, your home, your car, and more. Jared Mayo serves areas O'Brien, Weekly, and Gibson Counties. Get your quote today at allstate.com slash Jared Mayo. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Our guests today are Roger Colson and Prentice Colson. They've uh, started a really cool winery um, over in Fulton. And so we're learning a little bit about what what the process they went through and, and what the experience has been like. Uh, has the response now that you've, uh, unveiled these and they're for sale, has the response been in any way different than you anticipated? Actually, no. Uh, we knew going into this, that our flavors were, were good. Uh, actually, to be honest with you, when we tested the flavors of the ones at the commercial level where we have based over the ones we have at home, we were pleasantly surprised at the flavor differences the they're more bold they're they're just a lot better flavor on the commercial level than they were at home so we're pleasantly pleased we've had many people come in and and they try and i said i don't like this flavor but they try it and it ends up being their favorite and so uh the overall response has been very positive uh it's just a matter of getting the word out uh to adjoining neighborhoods in the region uh, and hopefully expanding into Tennessee uh, so that we can distribute in Tennessee at some point in the future as well. So people who want to try and taste your wine and see if they like it or not, what's the best way for them to find it? Uh, the best way to find it currently would be to look, look us up on Facebook at Fulton Winery. We are in the process of designing a standalone website that's kind of in construction right now. I'm not sure as an ETA as far as when that will be done. Uh, but be on the lookout for that. We are on Google Maps. So if they search up, you know, Fulton Winery in Fulton, Kentucky, it is going to pull from the maps. Uh, there will be contact information there. So uh, those two uh, places you can search for us. And you and people can come to your place and actually buy it there at the yes. physical location yes. there. Yes, we, we serve it by the drink. We, what we do, is we offer it everything from what we call uh, sample flights. Uh, you can come in, you can We've got it set up where you come in by a flight of four samples, uh, about one ounce each, uh, or you can buy a glass. Uh, we also offer it in, we have it in a 750 milliliter bottle, of course. And we also offer it in what we, what we, the industry calls growlers. We put it in a 32 or 64 ounce growler, uh, and we sell that growler to our patrons. And then the premise was that if we sell it this way, that they get a better deal. If, they, if they're local, they can come back, have this thing refilled. They start saving money. Uh, and so basically they start getting free wines after a certain amount of fills. And that's been a, that's been a, actually a huge success. We so, sell more of those than what we had really anticipated. Uh, so that's been a real, that's been a real positive uh, for us. Well, I love how you guys have, uh, you know, a lot of people are living in big cities and big communities and the wishing they could, you know, downsize or move into a more rural 
community, but have trouble finding the kind of job that they want. Um, and so it's great that you guys have kind of created your own way by, by doing this. So I love it when people get creative and, uh, what, what would you say is your inspiration? Just, I, I guess just the love of tasting a, a product that you've had made, uh, that's enjoyable. Um, you know, that was the key. We were making it at home. We enjoyed, we enjoyed it. Uh, we give samples to people. They enjoyed it. And it was like, Hey, you know, maybe more people enjoyed it. And we just sort of jokingly, I just sort of jokingly said, you know, maybe we could sell this, just make a living off of it. And three or four years down the road, here we are. And so, you know, I just, I would tell people, if you have a dream, follow. That's great. Prentice, what about you? I would second most of what he said there. It's definitely one of those things where find something you enjoy doing and have a passion for and, and explore that and pursue that. And for our, in, in our case, it was the winemaking. And I guess a bonus of that was that now we get to work for ourselves versus other people. So, you know, we're making decisions now on what we do and everything moving forward versus somebody else telling us. Uh, but, you know, we definitely have a passion for the winemaking after doing it at home. Uh, we explored that and here we are. That's great. Well, we'll we're, we're, we'll have to figure out some kind of one of our big events that we have here at night where we um, serve adult beverages where you guys can come and do some taste testing for people so they can sample it and and see what it's all about. So congratulations on getting it this far and the success that you found. I'm, I'm really happy for you. Um, and thank you for being on our podcast today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. And thanks to all you listeners who joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. 